Okay, I'm going to start with uh, the darkest um, parts of this scene and do an expression in using a lot of line work, thinking about what I see, what lines I see in the landscape. And uh, first of all, I see these little outlines of the boulders. And I'm just gently going uh, around some of the boulders here where I feel there's some shape. And I'm making a pattern of rocks just from the use of a line and thick line, thin line, uh, joining, joining these shapes with the line, adding some little textural details, and the black is running out, so I will stop there. Then I can add some gray line just to have a little bit of variation in my line, and I'm going to make this line uh, very thick and just bring it across here. That's a little bit of dry brush, and perhaps that can be a bit of the the water as it's flowing by the rocks but most interestingly is to me are these pattern of horizontals which are very varied and spaced nicely nature already has a, a beautiful rhythm set up and so it can be just a a little bit of a warmth into the into the color here and i'm going to put some water with it keep it thin and i'm just going to present some of the lines that I feel are working here and that's a thick tree and come out from that a little dot oops my palette's falling all over um, then there's another tree here it really curves up okay um, a thicker line and get some and really it could just be a few of these little lines that are, suggest the branches and uh, I see some warmer lines in the back here they're kind of lit oh let's make it uh, Yep. Yep. Okay. I'm going to get a different brush here. That brush doesn't seem to be on it pointing very well. So I'll just try a different one here. This is the tree behind. So I'm going to skip that line as I go up. And there's a nice little branch breaking off there. And maybe I'll just keep, uh, get some line that is just strictly the moss on the rocks and whether that's a line I guess is questionable it's a brush stroke anyway and I suppose if you want to just work with certain lines and have them intercept that can already set up a pattern uh, of moss and the like lichen on the rocks And by cross-hatching like this, you can get depth into your painting because it adds the same way that pencil would back and forth over it, each other will add a darker aspect to the work. So let's, let's repeat that rhythm over here a bit. Uh, the shadow of this rock can be lines and this can be lines in the other direction. It's good to vary these things for interest can do some verticals and let's repeat that pattern here um, and thin it out. Now there's a lot of interesting line behind those trees. I, I wouldn't want to override this pattern of linear aspects with a, a lot of very detailed line in the back. So I could water it right down. Let's see what that would do. And, and that is sort of the color back there. So this can just be a really gentle expression of the brush in the background and let's pick up more color and it might change a bit and get thicker down here carry it through and this is kind of uh, reminiscent of what Anne Kipling did with pastels she would sit at the la in the landscape and do the top of the mountains and just uh, really sc scribble I suppose but in response to what she saw and that scribble had um, the expression that the artist wanted to present. 
the depth of the bushes uh, underneath perhaps with a continued line and she'd add more line work where there was more value and she would build that up with just expressive line and so they can be quite organic or they can be quite uh, straight and, and we could, I could render this log that's here with a strong linear pattern this way and uh, let's just get some of these little patterns here with the little trees that are sticking up and starts to become a, a a repetition like a chorus in a song and some of it might have a mouth and then how would we fill in the, some of the rocks that's that would be an interesting thing to consider and if we do use some opaque paint uh, you know we can just use line to set up a pattern of, of that color there's some orange in the base of that rock I noticed so let's get that in there a nice orange along the edge here and I guess a dot is just a a line that hasn't been extended so why don't we break up a line as well with uh, patterns that form a line so now all of a sudden I can form some things in the water with a continuous line Continuous line, the continuous line, and let's get some green in there. Another continuous line. And, and let's just bring that pattern here. That's a glaze over that line, and then you can add some green little dashes, okay, uneven lines. And uh, there's some darks in the, so there's a little repetition there, and a little rep back and forth repetition there. Let's just keep rendering those rocks with a, a gentle. Uh, sort of gray color. Uh, there's a bit of shadow on that one. Cross hat, cross hat, dot. And, you know, there is a warm glow in the distance, so we can still use linear patterns like this, squiggly lines, and get some warmth back there with a just a very thin, almost water color application using acrylics here. You can thin it right down with water, especially on paper, and play out some of this line throughout. That's some, some, okay, there are some really interesting lines I just discovered in the bare bushes coming out from behind these green rocks. And that red should just sing if I accent the rocks with a really strong green, like an opaque green. And uh, let me get that in there. So while I can push this, I can get some shape here underneath this rock and show. So I'm filling in areas and I'm gonna make a line between two colors. So I'll get this green going and then I'm going to get 
the complement, like a nice uh, pink even. Oh, that's going to really exaggerate that line. And they can blend. Here's, you know, somewhat of what uh, you saw in uh, Shadbolt's work. He started to just fill in color, and then you'd have basically line wherever there was different colors mixed. So you got these really great, exciting color notes throughout his abstract pieces. Um, I noticed he often had a beautiful purple uh, someplace. And so by bringing different colors together, you start to see um, the contrast in the work and the line just plays a really nice rhythm in complement to it. So I'm almost done this piece. I don't want to uh, overdo some of the transparency. Uh, maybe I'll just get some gray uh, with zinc white. Zinc white's a transparent white, so it should uh, it should just cover sort of gently if I use it, uh, with especially watered down. So I'll just get some nice grays in support of the background here. There are some rocks in the back there that could act as really beautiful grays and uh, I would need a bigger brush but sometimes it's okay to just work with what you have and try to make it work it's just another lovely gray color that I'm pushing against this yellow and that should have a nice play let's bring that rock up front here it has orange on the bottom and this one let's just fill in some color between the lines get some of this action going I notice there's little dots on the rocks so while it's wet it'll kind of bleed out oh, I like that blue transferring in different areas um, Let's put the blue right beside this orange, and that brings your eye right there. And by bringing dots through this, um, you know, that could represent just a little bit of the dotted back uh, gravel that I noticed. And these can be softened out, so as, as the dots focus in the front here, they can be more of a focal point uh, to the piece. And let's repeat it just a little bit elsewhere. And it's starting to form an abstract expression of this outdoor scene here by Lynn Valley, where actually we're just at the base of the walkway where uh, one of the group of seven, Varley, would come and uh, paint as well. So I'm sure uh, I'm appreciating some of what he managed to appreciate here. And that's really what I'm trying to share with you here is that we can come out to nature and let it inspire us in our own way as well as think about how other artists have done similar things. Um, and you can make it your own. It always will be your own if you just go out and try to express with what you know about the paints and what you feel in your heart. So I'm almost, uh, I haven't had a chance to look at what's happening here, um, but I can always tone some of this expression down um, and maybe bring some opaque paint through to uh, soften some areas that start to feel a bit strong or overpowering. And uh, this is, almost like a veil, it's a white, a bit of gray in it. Some shapes can be darker, like this one, and placed on top. Depending on the type of pigment, if it's opaque, like uh, Cerulean Blue is a little bit more opaque, it'll cover a little bit, and you can put it on top. This is still very wet, but if I want to have a little bit more um, exact